Hi, gay is not sin and Jesus isn't asking the gay person to change and be straight. You know, it, it's wonderful to be alive in these days. And if you're a Christian, it's, you, you can have a really wonderful walk with Jesus Christ. It's, it's wonderful to see the things that he wants to do with you. You know, we know the song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Well, this is a pretty true statement in that song because Jesus will never leave you and he's just so wonderful um, when you accept him and you believe that he's the son of God that he died for you and paid the price for your sin he comes into your life and you're born again your spirit becomes reborn your new creation again and you now can get to know Jesus. Not only reading the Bible how, is how you mainly get to know Jesus, but you can walk with Jesus. He can answer your prayers. Sometimes prayers could be answered within minutes. And sometimes, you know, within 10, 15 minutes. Sometimes they may take weeks or months, but you'll notice as time go on that you get a lot of answered prayer. But there's a key in walking with Jesus. Jesus tells us that God tells us in his word he inhabits the praises of the people. So if you praise Jesus continually, you know, in your mind, nobody can hear you. Or when you have the opportunity, praise him out loud. If your church allows it, praise him there. But just keep Jesus in your prayers. When something really bad happens to you, praise Jesus. Thank Jesus. He's with you. Trust Him. And if you do these things and mean it with all your being and to love God with all your heart and all your mind and all your strength, this is exactly how God wants you to love Him because that's how He loves you. He loves you with all His mind, with all His strength, and with all His heart. That's how God loves you. And there's a result to it. You know, there's a lot of other religions out there, but they can't ever say that they have a relationship where they have a friend with their God. With Jesus, you have a friend in Jesus. You can talk to him. And you, there's, you can hear him even. He, he can speak to you inside your head. You can hear him at times. There's so many wonderful things that can happen. And some things that is not necessarily greatly important or of a great need, but he'll answer you just because you want it. One time it was really interesting. Uh, I needed to get a rental car. Uh, and we wanted to, we were thinking about buying a certain kind of car. And so... We were getting in our car to drive down to pick up the other car. And so I prayed, God, you know, we're thinking of getting this one particular car. Can you have that car available for us when we get to the rental place? And so we can rent that car so we could like test drive it. 
Now this isn't anything that is life or death or threatening or something you have a great need of or anything. It'd be helpful in determining if you like that car or not. Well, we got to that car rental place. There was no, that car didn't, wasn't there anywhere on the lot. Doesn't look like it's ever been there. And so we were signing up there. Uh, and they had the key ready to give some other car. And guess what? This particular car we was wanting drove into the lot. I said, is that your car? And they said, yeah. And I said, can we take that one? They said, sure, no problem at all. So they switched the keys out from the one that they were giving us and gave us the key to that car. So we got to drive that car uh, for a while. Well, we decided that we're glad we didn't pursue and buy that car because we really didn't like it after driving it a while. But this is the answered prayer. There's so many times when answered prayer, one real cool time was I was went down to a place that was a salt and sea out there in the desert, huge 30 mile long sea in the middle of the desert. And growing up, we had a lot of fun there, fishing, swimming, and so forth. Well, I went down there for the moment, and I, I took a bus down there, and I, I decided, well, I didn't want to stay any longer. I was going to plan to stay longer, you know, seeking God and whatever it is I was thinking. And but then it's really hot, you know, the flesh is, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So I, well, I better head on back home. And so I got up on this place on the highway and there was another highway that turned off of that. And I was sitting there hitchhiking, waiting for a car to come by. There weren't too many cars. And I was just sitting there looking around. And I said, you know, I don't have any food, but I'm not hungry. It's not really urgent that I get any food or anything like that but you know I know God <laughs> so let me just ask him I said God out here in the nowhere place there's no hint of food anywhere can you give me some food and I ask in Jesus name of course you have to ask in Jesus name um, and suddenly a big semi came by and he made the turn to go on that other highway at that corner where I was sitting at. And at the top of that semi, the load he had, it was a load of corn on the cob. And one ear rolled off and rolled down, hit the ground and rolled to about 10 feet away from me, or closer even. And it kept going, only that one ear rolled off. And I went over and picked it up, opened it up. It was the most wonderful corn I ever tasted. Nice big kernels and everything. And I was just within minutes of asking God for some food. I mean, who could figure, looking around in that desert area, how could there possibly be some place food would suddenly appear within arm's reach just about? So it's wonderful when you have accepted Jesus. And he says, heretofore you haven't ever asked anything in my name. What name? Jesus Christ's name. Now ask in my name and you shall receive it. So you can ask Jesus for anything. It doesn't matter if it's not good for you. He's not going to give it. Then you're, you're not going to get it. But you don't know. Maybe he'll give it to you. Maybe you just need a little comfort answer to a prayer or something and he'll answer something what might be otherwise seeming silly or why are you asking for that there's real people starving in the world pray for them or something but God loves you he so loved you as much as that he asked you to love him or basically command you to love him with all your heart all your mind and all your strength this is how he loves you and he cares about you. Jesus is your friend. So you can ask anything in Jesus' name and he will give it. So there's many things that, that you can have when you're a Christian. When you're a Christian, it would be good to ask Jesus to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. You get a lot more than when you accept Jesus and you're born again and the Spirit comes in you but when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit that gives you a new dimension of the power 
and gives you the ability to understand things in the spirit and see and hear in the spirit as it was and operate in spiritual gifts and so forth and speak a language you never learn you can in this language is allows the Holy Spirit to pray for you so it can, it's a perfect language things can get done when you pray in the spirit and you don't understand what you're praying about and when you're praying with your understanding well you know what you're praying about but a lot of times you might pray something more selfish and so forth again don't be too concerned about what you pray for just ask God and you might be surprised how quick he can answer things it could be about your work about your play about your entertainment and you might be surprised that he can answer within minutes in my work I got promoted from part-time to full-time extremely quickly and then to become a manager then a key carrying manager uh, which which basically at times your manager the whole store so that was pretty amazing turn of events to to know that this really huge store and you're the one managing it and having access to everything every key every combination everything to the whole building and anybody that ask anything you can do it and you can grant any amount of discount you want uh, because you had that power and as soon as there's a regular manager come back in then your your power goes back to limited to the degree of manager that you are it was kind of cool to see the miracles that God worked in my employment and one time I was having a hard, hard time doing TV programs because I'd like to be outside someplace and the wind was horrible the wind was my worst enemy and I went through a lot of microphones trying to find one that'll work. <coughs> and then one day, they had a Christmas party at my work. And I was kind of late, but I got in there and I got a little tag, a coupon thing. And then they draw from that. And it was within five minutes after I got there, the store manager comes up to me and says, you won this. And he get, she gave me a box. And then it was a headset and microphone system which turned out to be the worked fabulous in wind it just knocked the wind right out so it, when I did the program people can hear every word I say and that was a miracle uh, when I tried to do it myself and just read about all these microphones and try to find one that'll work didn't do very good but just letting God he brought the perfect one to me and it's just amazing walking in Christ because he loves you and he's your friend you can talk to him as a friend you don't have to talk to her in a holier than thou language you just talk to him as a friend and he says ask in my name so if you hear people just saying a prayer and just saying amen or something at the end of it they're not asking in Jesus name maybe they mean it or something that way but but he says ask in his name so in Jesus Christ's name if you need to be healed you say in the name of Jesus be healed to that thing and enemies may come to attack you but you have authority over the enemies because you were bought with a price Jesus died he paid the price for your sin so now you are righteous when God sees you you are righteous so it's, the enemy comes to accuse you that you're doing bad even though maybe you're doing bad and maybe you're not sure you're doing bad or maybe you know that that wasn't the right thing to do so the enemy comes up and says now you won't be able to talk to God or anything that is a lie you can talk to God God paid the price for your past, present, and future sins. You're a sinner until you die or you're raised at the rapture. And so you can rebuke that demon or that thought. If you got thoughts you don't like, if you hear things in your head you don't like, you can rebuke them and say, get out in Jesus' name. You can name whatever thought it is. And 
and you can right away say, Jesus, forgive me of, of this thought or that thought or doing this or doing that or whatever. Maybe what you're doing wasn't a sin, but maybe you thought it was because maybe, you know, like gay people, the church condemns gays upside down and backwards. So a lot of gay people think men, they must be living in sin. So they got to ask God forgives all the time. Well, you can still ask God to forgive you, but if it's not sin, there's really nothing to forgive you of at that part. It's not like you're Trump or anything. He says, I haven't done anything wrong. I don't need to be forgiven of anything. Well, everybody needs to be forgiven. And sometimes you don't know what it is you did wrong. And sometimes you do. So, the thing that Jesus did on the cross, dying and paying the price for your sins, and then rising, proving he was worthy to pay the price, and then he rose to heaven in the view of 500 people. Uh, he paid the price and you're still a human being and you're still going to sin and it's almost no matter what you try to do you're going to still be sinning the church in the old time Moses came and gave the law God was right there telling him say this and Moses had the the pen and he's writing down God was dictated him five books of the Bible those are long long chapters you try to read those those are long hard tra chapters but word for word he, Moses wrote those down and if the people obeyed that that would forgive their sins but as we read through the Old Testament especially all the first books all five books of the Torah and of Moses and then continue reading past that you will read that none of the kings of of Israel ever did what was right inside of God almost every last one of them there was a couple of kings that did right by God and out of those very few that did right by God in the sight of God only two of them that I recall actually tore down the groves in the high places. The rest of the kings that did right in the sight of the Lord, which wasn't very many, just a few, they didn't tear those down. And so there were still idols and wor worshiping going on. Then they continued to disobey God and king after king and we have this almost throughout the Old Testament even King David had problems and Solomon they were well loved by God but yet they had some distinct problems throughout their life and so then Jesus came once and for all was the final sacrifice if you believed in him and his shed blood that's the only time you need to have blood shed for your sins was that one time 2,000 years ago and Jesus comes into you and God writes his laws on your heart so you don't have to have uh, some Levite telling you what to do or some priest or anything because now God has written his law on your heart but what did the church do? Right from the beginning, hardly Jesus is hardly even risen yet. I mean, I haven't been up in heaven very long, and already you read the apostles or Paul saying, you know, oh, you're following after Apollo, you're following after so and so, you're following after Jesus, and already so you see the beginnings of denominationalism, which continued to go, and people develop their own concepts and doctrines, and. Finally, they came to a point in the second century to put a more, all of this into writing and translate into Latin Vulgate. And so they'd have to cons have a concise set of what would be the Word of God eventually. And you already had the Old Testament, so now you had the, the beginnings of the New Testament books all put together. But at the same time in that second century there was a corrupt version also in the process that had sub subtle changes that sort of took Christ out of Jesus and that was also translated in the Latin Vulgate in that second century 
but it wasn't used again until the 15th century, while the Rite manuscript was used continually even to today. But in the 15th century, the Catholics discovered this corrupt manuscript, and because it was so old, second century after all, they decided it could be their official Catholic Bible. And in the 1880s, we had two people, Westcott and Hort, who decided that they didn't like the King James Version, besides colleges and everything, they were saying Jean King James Version. A, a lot of science is starting to prove things wrong and everything. Of course, now science has proven the Bible right. But in those days, they were it was they were all moving away from, they didn't like those Holy Rollies camp meeting Christians, King James Version Christians. And so, Westcott Hort got this old, corrupt manuscript translated into Greek and then translated into English and since they were one of them was on the board to revise the Church of England Bible they got their whole Bible to become the official Church of England Bible where all modern translations come from that have 50,000 to 80,000 corruptions it's important that now when you're studying the Word of God that you study. You don't just simply read it. I mean, yeah, you read it, because that's about the best we have. You pick up your Bible. And this Bible I got in 1974, and I still use it. I still like it. I loved it. It was my first miracle, this Bible. I asked God when I, they gave me the book of John, and I cried all the way through it. Then I said, God, I want more. And the only thing I know that Kmart has a book department. So I'm going to go there. I have $4.59. I'm going to go there and see if they have a Bible for that amount. Well, this Bible is $4.57, including tax and everything. And so I got this Bible, and I still have it today from back early 1974. So you read, but you've got to keep in mind that the Bibles are tricky especially since the year 2000 people have been revising dictionaries and lexicons and concordances and commentaries to fit church culture and can and which the condition the church have there's some 37,000 Christian denominations and everybody is saying what they want you got a choice of whatever preaches the best way for you, that's the church you go to. If you don't like one, you find another one that maybe fits what you like. Well, you gotta when you're studying, you gotta keep in mind that as we get toward the end, there's getting counterfeit Bibles, and even good Bibles are being some words are being changed in them. So you gotta really study. And if you want to go to the Greek or Hebrew, you gotta remember they're revising them. They're adding meanings that wasn't there in Jesus or Moses's day. So you gotta keep in mind. You gotta read the older meanings to these words when you're doing your studying. But most of all, if you don't know Jesus, you should get to know him. And there's God made it really easy to get to know him. He said, just believe I gave Jesus to you. And that he climbed up on that cross to pay the price of your sins. When they nailed him to the cross and st stuck that spear in his side and he bled, he shed his blood for you that paid the price of sin and so if you believe God sent him and he died on that cross then when they took him down and laid him in that grave that sepulcher and then three days later he rose proving that he was worthy to pay the price for your sins so you real simple you believe that, that Jesus is God's son and that he died instead of you. You sh should die. The wages of sin is death. You should die, but you would never come back to life because the wages of sin is death. And you can do nothing to earn it. Again, reading the Old Testament, the Torah, the first five books, you will see that it's impossible to obey a law that could get you saved. But accepting Jesus, it is imputed to you as righteousness. So when, Je when God looks at you, he sees Jesus so he sees you as righteous. And it makes it easy. Just ask Jesus to forgive you. So you do something wrong? Forgive me, Jesus. 
And then Jesus gives you even something more. He, he baptized you in the Holy Spirit. Now the Spirit will come on you and fill you and endue you with power to endure through the times of coming. Now Matthew 24 goes into details of the <coughs> what will be happening as the apostles ask them what's going to happen. And they say there's earthquakes and devices various places and and pestilence and and wars and rumors of war well these aren't as simple as just saying that what they are the Greek involvement of those words are saying that it's like birth pains the contractions get closer and closer together until when the baby's about to be born they're just right after another really intense so when you see all these kind of things all happening we got Ten hurricane, mag huge hurricanes all at one time bombard. We had two now. That hit the strongest one ever hit over there is in China now. And so forth. So we got a lot of things and earthquakes all over the world. When these things start really getting more intense, it's, it says, and you'll be killed. With that meaning there, it says, slaughter, massacred. So, and this is before the rapture basically so we're going to see lots of hard things that we need to endure to the end so ask Jesus to baptize the Holy Spirit and one of the things of being baptized with the Holy Spirit is the gift of healing so you can be healed now that gift is still good today as it was with Jesus whenever Jesus went out and preached he ended with healing everybody that wanted healing so put your place of hand on that place of hand pain right now in the name of Jesus be healed now tune in every week that you're watching now. I'm on same time whatever you're watching, a few times a week. And also remember, go to my website. Uh, press the donate button or the GoFundMe button. Give a little, give a lot. It helps out. And God bless you. Tune in again next week.